record. Thank you. Now we're recording. Uh, uh, happy Mother's Day again. Um, we'll make this quick. We'll try and get out of here in you know less than sixty for sure, but ideally forty-five minutes. And uh, Mr. Dawood there is our, our representative of the development uh, and uh, the listing agent, if you would want to call it that, for us Canadian folks. So he, he knows all the goods. We're uh, as informed as we can be. I'm actually going to go visit the site myself uh, in about a couple of weeks. We're, we're heading to St. Petersburg today. This morning we did a car shuffle. I dropped off my small car, picked up a big van so we can jam all the luggage in there. And then we're going to drive to St. Petersburg uh, as soon as this call is over. Okay, thanks, Sophia. Go. Cool. And uh, so let's get this thing rolling. Uh, uh, I, I met uh, Dawood uh, through Enza, and uh, Dawood's uh, been a great guy. Um, uh, from what I can tell, and I haven't met you in person yet, but you, you've been pretty straight up, and uh, I appreciate the the honesty and uh, what's the word, the the no BS kind of style. I don't know how else to say that, but uh, I, I I like Dawood for that, and I want him to give you all the goods here. And, and then allow him to answer questions because there's going to be a ton of questions from everybody here for sure. So no problem. So let's take it away. Uh, and and we... just wanted to introduce as well Dawood's partner, Deep. So Deep is on the line as well. So they are partners just like Paul and Andrew are partners and Megan and I are partners. So welcome to Deep as well. And thank you for your time today. You took the words out of my mouth. I, I, <laughs> yeah. The project... This project literally couldn't have been done without Deep. Um, we've been on this project from day one. We have helped design it uh, or reconfigure the room to, to meet the, the modern uh, day demand for what travelers and vacationers want. And I think, I, ironically, the timing couldn't have been better for what we didn't know that we were planning, that we ended up planning. So I just want to introduce myself to hopefully give you guys an additional level of comfort. Um, I met Enza <clears throat> a number of years ago, and she's uh, very kind and very dear to me as a, as a more than a friend, uh, more like a family member to me. And uh, I myself, I'm also Canadian. I moved to Florida in 2002 for a good 10 years after the market crashed. Um, I solely sold properties to Canadians. So needless to say, <clears throat> Deep and I worked together in another firm before this. And basically we created a one-stop shop where we assisted Canadians from A to Z with planning a purchase. And at the time I would come to Canada. And when I say I would come to Canada, I would literally come throughout Canada. We went from Montreal all the way to Victoria Island. Um, and spent a lot of time in the Toronto area working with buyers, working with investors. And we created a model that we replicated, I think, in an even better way because now we can control one project and we can control a lot of the moving parts around that to ensure that your process is going to be smooth, you're going to be happy with the product, and more important, and more importantly, we are excited about it because it's something very unique that even in Orlando, this is literally one of its one of a kind in terms of the model offering and the architectural um, uh, design that, that we're presenting here. So, you know, without further ado, I'm going to jump into the presentation. I'm going to start to share this with you, and I'm going to hold all your questions, please, until the end because I would like to cover. I think a lot of the questions and concerns that you may have um, through the presentation. So let me let me just minimize the screen here and let's rock and roll. Okay, so welcome to our Orlando presentation. I have a very unique uh, opportunity to share with you guys. I wanted to give you a bird's eye view on everything going on here and why Florida is obviously and naturally a great option for you to consider if you are considering investing in real estate. Well, for starters, unlike most places in the world, it doesn't seem like we have any kind of 
corona lockdown pandemic going on as of i think june 1st they're even removing this mask mandate here everything's back to normal you can go to a concert you know the bars and businesses and restaurants are open at full capacity and people are flocking here in unbelievable numbers florida you're supposed to you're supposed to select the samsung intel Oh, from the mute everybody. We're going to mute everyone. Don't worry. Okay, I got no it. Problem. No problem. Thanks. Um, Florida is the fourth largest state in the United States, but more importantly, it has the most coastal mileage than any other state. We have great weather, weather all year round when much of the country is um, cold or experiencing some kind of extreme weather. We naturally have around 70 degrees weather, which is, I think, the equivalent of like 25, 26, 24, somewhere around there um, throughout the year. And uh, even the coldest days in our winters are, you know, maybe 5, 10 degrees Celsius. And that, that's only in the morning. And then it quickly goes up into warmer temperatures in the mid-afternoon. Our population is growing. We have over 1,000 people relocating to Florida on a daily basis. And we have over 21 million people that live in Florida. If you drive from Orlando, Florida to Miami, and you draw a big circle around that, within about three hours, you can pretty much cover the whole state of Florida. We're also known for our famous theme parks, Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, just to name a few, famous beaches, largest universities located right here in Central Florida, which is the University of Central Florida. Some of the, the largest cruise ship uh, terminals, whether you're cruising out of Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Cocoa Beach, um, which is Cor uh, Port Canaveral, or even Tampa. And for the, all of these reasons and the growing population that we have, a lot of companies obviously choose Florida as their corporate headquarters, one for tax shelter reasons, and then two, because it serves as a great distribution hub to get to so many people in such a short period of time. So zoning in on Orlando, in 2019, we had 78 million people that visited Orlando, one city. And to put things in perspective, that's almost double the population of Canada. It's the number one visited city in the United States. We have not only tourist traffic, but we have convention traffic because we have the second largest convention center in the country. It's also the number one global tourist destination. And I think in many ways, if you don't bring your kids to Disney, I think it kind of makes you a bit of a bad parent. So there's a lot of reasons why Orlando is picked for, um, you know, as a, as a popular destination. In addition to that, I can assure you with everybody being locked up for as long as they have, when the borders open up fully, you're gonna see that in Orlando, we'll probably end up hitting numbers of over 85 million in terms of tourism that's coming here. Because as it stands right now, the park with the capacities that they're running, oftentimes on the weekends, they end up shutting down the parks by about 11, 12 o'clock um, already. And our hotels are booked. And you'll even notice with announcements such as this, the CDC advised that it's safer to stay in a vacation property than it is to stay in a hotel. And with that being the case, we are seeing occupancies that are hitting over 90% in terms of the occupancies for the home rentals in our short-term vacation rental market, which is you know, close to the Disney area. That whole four corners area is designated as uh, short-term rental. It's allowed, it's legal. And for that reason, you can't even get a home. I mean, Paul called me up uh, early in the week asking for some suggestions for home rentals and, you know, in an effort to obviously try to be helpful, I had looked for a friend a day or two prior to that and it was impossible because everything was already booked up and um, I hope Paul did find something after all, but uh, even the hotel on the hotel side, they're also hitting uh, full capacity, especially on the weekends when people are driving down from neighboring states or even flying down to come and enjoy not only our great weather, but all the attractions that we have. As you can see this article as well, too, the CEO of Airbnb said with the surging demand that they have, they can't even keep up with 
the the bookings that they have that they actually need a ton more uh, hosts to be able to provide properties that can be rented. That would one sec. I don't mean to interrupt you. I know you like to keep the flow going, but go, go back to that slide for a sec. Yes, sir. Just to put into perspective for everybody, because I mean, gen generally everybody on the call is you know in the Toronto GTA area. Think about the contrast. You got Airbnb saying they can't meet demand, and think about what's happening in Toronto with Airbnb. Toronto's you know trying to pass legislation to shut it down. Condos won't let you. Is, is, are, are there people? coming to Toronto for tourism? Nope. So, you know, we always talk about the flow of people and the flow of immigration and how it affects real estate. And I'm not saying, uh, you know, not having Airbnb is gonna affect Toronto prices, but uh, 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 while Toronto still might get decent immigration, Florida is getting, uh, I would say something similar, especially to the epicenters of, of uh, Orlando and Miami and some other uh, hotspots. And not only that, they get a monstrous flow of uh, tourism also. So as, as the flow of people goes, I mean, we all know, so does real estate. So it's something to keep in mind for people in Toronto there. Go ahead, David. And to add to, to Paul's point too, an interesting dynamic has actually happened in this sector. As more Americans are starting to learn how to work from home, places like vacation rentals have actually become a desired investment opportunity because they said you know what if i'm going to end up working from home why don't i just work from this place it's beautiful it's in a resort it's gated and then when things settle up or if i'm needed to go back to work or go back to my hometown i'll just use it as a rental too so i'll give you a perfect example i listed a property early in the week i put it on the market at 9 30 by 10 o'clock i was receiving offers i have received when I say multiple offers, an unbelievable amount of, of, of offers. Sounds I did like a Toronto. one off. Sorry, go ahead. Sounds like Toronto. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, it was the closest time in my experience to understand what the, the Toronto mentality was all about. Um, I host a radio show. I had a, a VIP um, real estate agent that like works with a lot of the big developers and, and so on and so forth. And we were basically talking about that. That was the only time that I ever felt that I had, you know, plus 25, 30 people lining up for this one hour window to come and view the property. And for the first time, I was actually noticing that most of the people that were in line were agents working with buyers overseas or in different parts of the country um, and literally doing virtual tours and FaceTime tours for them in order to secure the offer. Um, so, you know, this is definitely in high demand right now. And, you know, I think people are just like you guys fed up sitting at home and being in some kind of lockdown for an extremely extended period of time. And, and I think, you know, a lot of people are jumping on these opportunities, especially on the development side, because there's really no inventory in the market. Currently, we have 2,800 uh, homes in the market. So literally, if all the homes in our market are sold. We will have no inventory in the Orlando market in just under a month's time. So just to get, let you guys know the geographic proximity of where we are, we are three exits away from Disney World. And um, we are also so close to the outlet malls, which are open to 11 o'clock at night here because of the amount of tourists that come to shop in, in Orlando. Um, Universal and City and uh, SeaWorld are very close to each other, about 20 minutes away. If you're a golfer, within, I would say, 10 minutes, there is probably over 15 golf courses to golf at. And if you are a golfer, Orlando is definitely one of the best golfing destinations that you could possibly go to as well, too, or play at as well, too. So just a little introduction. Here is a brief video so that you can get an idea and learn more about our project. Does it come with the Audi R8 too? Just for you, Paul. <laughs> My wife's gonna like the furniture. So 
gorgeous. So upscale. And there you have it, folks. So our project consists of 126 townhouses on four unique floor plans. We essentially have a three bedroom, a four bedroom, a five bedroom, and a six bedroom model. The three bedrooms are the only models that come with a jacuzzi, whereas every other townhouse, whether it's a four bedroom, a five bedroom, or even a six bedroom, comes with a swimming pool. So your very own private swimming pool, which is 12 by 18 feet, in your back patio area. You have a beautifully designed modern clubhouse that will feature a snack bar, a health and wellness center, <coughs> excuse me, a sleep pool, kids play area, and a putt putt golf section. We are currently under construction for these first two highlighted buildings that you see in the bottom picture, which if you reference the picture above, it would be the, the building right in the middle behind the gate and the building over towards the right. And basically we will be working counterclockwise through the construction um, of the development. We are currently, uh, we've sold about 20 units already and construction is definitely underway. I think we haven't even really got started to, to market this project. I think based on the, 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 the rate that we're going, we should probably go through this project or blow through this project really quickly as well too. So the Amber model, as you can see, is the only model that also comes with a carport. It has the jacuzzi, as I said, with all the bedrooms upstairs. You have the Jade model, which is the four bedroom, four bath. And notice the, the size of the units. We're looking at just under 2000 square feet. This has its own pool, in the back as well too, with one bedroom downstairs, which works great for elderly people or, or parents with younger kids. And more importantly, with vacation homes, a very important thing for you to notice is the ratio of bedrooms and bathrooms. So you have four bedrooms and four baths, which basically ensures or allows you to have more privacy for all of the families that are coming here. Now, I know you may not be thinking on these lines, but you have to remember that in the vacation market rental, there is a, a quote that goes, the greater number of beds equals the greater number of heads. And all that essentially means is we wanna have more people coming to stay in your home because renting a vacation property is a cheaper alternative for various reasons. Number one, you can have more people staying there. Number two, it saves a lot of money than staying in a hotel where you have to rent several hotel rooms and definitely saves on the cost for food, breakfast, lunches, and dinner. When you can do that, many families decide to come and stay at the townhouse and not have to go out to the parks every single day and just have some days to just enjoy the community and, and use it as a you know, cost-saving alternative as well too. So that's something to think about um, here because many people, when they come to travel, they're traveling with their families. Oftentimes they're bringing a parent with them or a brother or a sister or another family or best friend along with them as well too. So definitely what we've noticed over the years is, you know, we started off with homes that were three, four bedrooms then five, six bedrooms became really popular. We're at a stage right now where there's people that are out there looking for 14 bedroom homes for vacation rental. Uh, Dawood, uh, I just wanna add in a couple points. Can you go back a couple of slides to the clubhouse? Yeah, so something I wanted to mention, and I'm here with my three young kids, like six, three, and one, and uh, uh, the pool is like key. Without a pool here, I lose my mind. Like the pool is my daycare center, put it that way. So, right. and, uh, but, and I wanted to mention that and the kids play area, also another daycare center. Like I literally take them to the pool, put their floaties on, 
you know, my older one knows how to swim pretty good well now with lessons. And I'm literally working by the pool while they're playing. Like it's, it's fantastic. And uh, they can do the same for the kids area. So anyone with young kids, uh, uh, like keep that in mind. Uh, I'm here living that. And, and, you know, think about your renters too, who are going there with young kids. They're going to be doing exactly the same thing. And pop forward for a second. The, uh, that's uh, one more. The, that three bedroom model. Okay. Yeah, that three bedroom model, uh, although it doesn't have a pool, uh, and not a big deal because it does have the jacuzzi and having the big pool uh, is is the key for me. And I, I, just 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 personal, I, I can't speak for anyone else. I'm just talking from a personal nature here because I'm here kind of living it. We, we, we In our last place, we had a, a little pool in the back and then there was a big common pool and they always wanted to go to the common pool because that's where all the other kids were playing, right? Now, it's always ideal to have a pool in the back if you're there with multiple families and a bunch of kids, you know, can just hang out together or, or people are afraid of, you know, interacting with other people. I mean, it's nice to have a private pool, but, you know, my kids were always wanting to go to the big pool to play with Lucy because she was, you know, eight doors down and they wanted to play together. And just a note, uh, keep going. Next slide. Um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong here, um, Dawood, on this four bedroom, the Jade model, uh, I, 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 I like the floor plan. I like the bedroom on the main floor because even if you're not using it as a bedroom, it can act as an office. You know, if you want to be there on the ground floor while your kids are watching TV or hanging out and kind of work. And I do like, and I, from correct me if I'm wrong again, that extra space on the second floor is like a second, you know, living area. Am I correct? Correct. So the way that that typically works is like this. Imagine a long day at the park. The kids are tired, the kids are cranky. And what we've come to realize, uh, or the builders have come to realize over time is that additional media space breaks up the privacy that you need, not only between the parents and their kids, but also between the kids and, and or, or other families to enjoy different parts of the house. And they can go upstairs, watch some TV, watch some cartoons, play some video games, whatever the case may be. And they have that space up there. Now, because we've also had an increasing demand for five bedrooms, you can actually look to convert this four bedroom media room into an additional bedroom for a small cost. Because currently in the blocks, which I will get into, the five bedrooms are essentially only the end caps. So in an effort to provide more five bedrooms within the property, you do have the option to be able to convert that should you choose. Okay. Yeah, we going. have only eight, six bedrooms, which we will be releasing at the very end of the project. Um, I typically oftentimes consider taking the slide out, but in an effort to really show you everything that's available, um, you know, we're keeping it in here, but they will not be released until the very end. This is the aesthetic of what we're going after. We've already selected all of the furniture selections. We are working with a company called City Furniture, which is one of the largest furniture companies that we have here in the Orlando area. And um, you know, we, we've gone out and we've selected every single thing that is available here. The cabinetry are going to end up being a matte lacquer and the countertops are all uh, quartz countertops. We're using one vacation rental management company, unlike many other resorts that have, you know, 10 or 15 to choose from. And the reason for that is because we want to treat this project essentially like you are investing into a Four Seasons, a Ritz-Carlton, that, sort, that sort of a thing, where you have one management company managing everything. All the units on the inside are consistent, down to the silverware, the linens, the towels, the whole nine yards. With that being the case, you're not going to end up having to have a room that's a Harry Potter themed or frozen or something like that, like a lot of other vacation properties have. It's going to be standardized. It's going to help you with your bottom line. And it's also going to help with replenishment items when things need to be replaced in your unit, like sheets, like um, towels, etc. They manage over 5,000 homes in over 80 US destinations. And Turnkey just got bought out by Vacasa, which is the largest property management company 
in the United States. I believe they currently hold an inventory of over 32,000 properties um, in their management. They market on over 50 travel sites and portals that help to ensure your ROI and your uh, and improve on your investment. Okay, the furniture packages that are available are as follows. Depending on the unit, we have everything included in that furniture package, including um, so which includes a three bedroom at three thirty seven thousand nine hundred plus tax. I don't know if you guys can see that small print. Uh, the four bedroom model is forty three thousand nine hundred plus tax. And then the five bedroom model is 45,900 plus tax. And in order for your property to, to be included in our program, it has to be furnished by City Furniture. And the only property management company that can manage your program on site is Turnkey, just to be clear. So we are uh, calling it a full upgrade package. But what I really want you to know is, you know, as compared to buying another project somewhere else, we're basically including every single upgrade that you possibly can include within the complex. I mean, yeah, within the unit at no additional cost. There are, will be no color selections because we want to create that, that look and consistency as you would, for example, in a high-end hotel. So, that will include gourmet kitchens, designer cabinets, quartz countertops, stainless steel appliances, and then wall tiles in the bathroom. So we're actually tiling the walls as well too. The pool package will also include the screen pools and the deck. And as I mentioned before, the jacuzzis will only be available in the three bedrooms and the pools will be available in the four, five, and the six bedrooms as well too. Here is the current pricing that we have available. Prices are subject to change as we start to release um, more units. We've already sold, we released, sorry, the, the first 25 uh, units. There are some, some units that are available currently until we actually go out and release another block of buildings. And um, currently we have a, a, an incentive that the developer is offering which is two years of paid HOA fees, which means homeowner association fees. That is the equivalent of maintenance fees, or I believe you call it strata fees in, in Canada. And, um, and that's what we have going on here as well too. Um, can, can somebody unmute Deep as well? So I can have Deep jump in. I, th I think I can, you guys can hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Yeah, the list that that would show, uh, there are a couple of other ones that was uh, reserved the last couple of days. I think uh, that is not updated, so sorry about that. But we are going to be releasing uh, uh, one more building soon. So I don't want anybody to panic and say, hey, we only have a few units left. So that's not the case. Uh, we're doing in stages. Uh, just to let you guys know, uh, we already have increased our price once uh, from the second building on, uh, 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 from the third building, sorry. So uh, as we move forward, earlier you are in the project, uh, a great price that you get, because as we go to a couple of buildings, we are increasing prices. Last increase uh, uh, we went up was 5,000. At this present time, actual, uh, the developer is desiring, desiring some, uh, to lease some of the units back. Uh, uh, and, and if somebody wants to be part of that program, we can uh, address those uh, questions if you have uh, at a rental amount uh, for a monthly uh, rental uh, rental monthly payment. Do you know what the payments are, Deep, so that you can share them? So that yeah. can get an idea. Just for like, I'll give you an example on a three bedroom, they're, they're raining anywhere $2,800 a month. Uh, the four bedrooms are pretty close to 3,400 bucks a month. And the five bedrooms are thirty five hundred bucks a month. And how long is the lease? Uh, he's. They're thinking about two, two years. Okay. So Wait, you know. So at least this way, guys, you'll know that you know your property will have a direct lease from the um, developer, or the uh, and um, you know you're guaranteed that that monthly income, just like you would buy a property in Toronto, and you know every month you're getting a consistent 
lease amount uh, that is predetermined by a lease contract uh, between you and your tenant, essentially. That's one thing we don't know how how often we're going to have this and how long we're going to carry on with this. So that's the only concern. Yeah. <clears throat> Just a note there, Dawood, for, for uh, I think what Deep is trying to say, and, and you can correct my terminology if I, if I get it wrong, but uh, to make it clear for everyone, what Deep is saying is there, there may be an opportunity that, that the developer wants to lease back your unit. Yes. For a couple of years. And you know, that for some people that might be desirable as it might provide them some security and knowing that there's some, you know, essentially guaranteed income or <coughs> guaranteed, but the, you know, the developers kind of um, uh, leasing it back from you and you have some, you know, income for the first couple of years until the property management and demand ramps up. Yeah, Paul, what we've noticed that we've threw this out there uh, mostly for you guys uh, for this presentation. And we're seeing more and more, more and more people when they see these articles that we share about occupancy and Airbnb, they don't want to be part of that program because they see the sky, sky's the limit. You know, why restrict yourself to X amount of dollars when they can be part of, uh, you know, making a, a bigger number if they're rented almost even 80% of the time. Uh, just to give you an idea, even in 2019, uh, uh, Airbnb models such as this was occupancy was pretty close to 75%. And that was only, you know, 78 million visitors. Uh, uh, so just imagine what's going to happen. I mean, you you haven't been here yet. You and Siasaki, you see, it's, there's no COVID there. Everybody's open. Restaurants are full <laughs> capacity. Over here, it, it, it's, it's crazy. It's scary to go out. But this is the new norm. We have to accept it. And and what's happening with this guys is uh, it's been a year, a year and a almost a year and a few months since COVID hit. People cannot stay home. So we drive around the Orlando and we see every other license plate to be from a different state. So instead of flying, people are driving down here. They're spending two to three weeks. Me and Daoud have uh, different listings because we are uh, real estate agents on different projects. I have not been able to show some of my houses for more than three months because the occupancy is 100%. I can't even sell the house because it's occupied. Yeah. Uh, that's the difficulties we are having. That's crazy. And uh, I can attest to what Deep is saying. On the, I'm on the Gulf side here. So if, if you guys can imagine it on the map, you know, uh, uh, deep end and uh, that would they're in Orlando closer to the Atlantic side. I'm on the Gulf side and it's really laid back here in terms of restrictions. And as that would mentioned, my new hero, uh, Mr. Governor DeSantis has so lifted, has lifted uh, all the uh, restrictions uh, as of June 1st. So ideally, and I'm saying it loud because my wife can hear me. If, if, if she allows me, we'll be here beyond June 1st too. <laughs> uh, we'll see though. But yeah, uh, I think deep, honest, sorry, yeah. Dawood, are, are you gonna review some yes. affected financials in this presentation? No, I'm not because um, yes. it's not part of the presentation and, and you know, the financials- Dawood, you wanna talk to them about TD at least? Yeah, yeah I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm still going. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm still going guys. Um, so just, just to explain to you guys how this works, okay, we do have financing available through TD USA. Although TD is uh, TD USA is is affiliated with TD Canada Trust, they essentially operate as two banking entities, right? TD's presence here in the U.S. has actually allowed for Canadians to be probably the most preferred foreign national borrower because they can borrow at some of the lowest rates as compared to other foreign national, nationals, and as well as with the, with the smallest down payment structure, which is 20% and 25%, uh, depending on whether you're buying it as a second home at 20%, or if you're buying it as an investment property at 25%. And basically, at this stage, I mean, really, your, your next step would be to circle back with us and to, um, or sorry, with Enza, Megan, and Paul, and just find out which uh, lots or uh, units you guys are interested in. And then of course, we will be able to secure this with a $5,000 reservation, at which time you will have some time 
to connect with Arthur and his team at um, yeah. ED and get pre-qualified. And then at that stage, we will go into contract and put down 10%. Um, we're saying 60 days here, but I mean, I, I will circle back with, with the team and figure out when the next deposit structure will be because for some of these units that we're reserving, a little bit further out than, than the first delivery of the units that we have. And this may come as a bit of a surprise to you guys, but we're actually delivering the first two buildings that we discussed in August, 2021. So just a couple of months away, not two or three years down the road, like many of the projects that you know you guys might be familiar with in the greater Toronto area as well, too. So um, with that, I just want to basically conclude the presentation. And I just want to let you know that we have all aspects of your purchase covered. I'm going to help you open up a bank account in the United States so that you can have your funds deposited into your account as well as transfer them back and forth with a cross-border account. We have property management covered for you, as we've discussed, which would obviously include any kind of maintenance. We are going to be able to connect you with an accountant down here that will be able to take care of your accounting needs, as well as help get you an ITIN number, which is an individual tax identification number, in order for you, A, to pay your taxes, and B, when you come to sell the property in the future, um, to, to assist you with, you know, any kind of uh, sales help and, you know, all things that, that, that come along with that, uh, including, you know, any withholding that may be needed at that stage, which, you know, we have all the professionals here to deal with you um, at that point in time. And we're obviously here to answer any of your questions. So, I mean, I guess at this point in time, Paul, I'll just turn it over to you. And if, yeah. if you have anything that you want to guide or direct us, we're here. Deep let, me, let me fire off a couple of very common questions. First, what's the size? I know you mentioned it, but what's the size of the pool in like the, the four or five, six bedroom there? In the, 12 in the backyard? by 18. 12 by 18. Yeah. Oh, that's bigger than my own pool. Um, okay. So for everybody, uh, 12 to 18 feet are the size of the pools in the individual units. Um, okay, so now uh, regarding the projected financials, now is it, would you, I'm asking your recommendation here, uh, uh, we're going to gather a list of people who essentially raise their hand and say they're interested in getting, right. you know, much more information. Would you recommend that uh, Enza, Megan and I review the uh, financials yeah. and projected financials with them directly? Yes, please. Okay, so we'll do that. And um, we'll, uh, I'll have Enza and Megan coordinate with you uh, with those numbers uh, to make sure they're, you know, as accurate as possible. Is that fair? Hundred percent. Right. And and let's also extend one more thing too. If anybody wants to have a one-on-one -on -one with with Enza Megan uh, after they answer their questions and they have some further questions, Deep and I are at your service. Yes. You know, we're happy to jump on another Zoom call. We're happy to take a conference call to help answer any of the questions that they may have specifically. Okay. And now, uh, obviously, all prices are in U.S. dollars. Uh, let's keep that easy. For anybody who's wondering what the HOA fee is, it's approximately 23% of the gross. Uh, no, 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 no. no, no. Uh, HOA is, uh, they're ranging anywhere from $215 a month to $260, depends on the units. Okay. So, so, I'm sorry, guys. Association. Yeah. so HOA, yeah, similar to yeah. HOA, otherwise known as strata, otherwise known as condo fees, anywhere from 215 to $260 a month. Yes. I think what I was referencing was the property management cost. Property management. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and for questions on the, <clears throat> what we're going to do, everybody is uh, I'm, I'm going to send you back an email and I'm going to ask you to essentially raise your hand. And from there, we're going to do a little zoom call with everybody who's actually interested in, you know, I'm not saying purchasing, but who wants a second level of details onto the financials. Okay. But uh, so stay tuned for that. And we'll cover all the HOA fees and financials and projected and the, the, the lease back stuff. And, you know, maybe we'll have deep or Dawood on that call if they can also maybe no guarantees. Oh, there were a couple of other questions there. Uh, one was, are the prices in U S dollars? Yes. yes. All U S dollars. Yeah, and the other question somebody put in, uh, how long is a, a turnkey uh, contract? It's forever. They're the only property management per company to be allowed to rent properties in that whole project. Yes, yes. 
I, 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 I don't run a property management company. I, I do manage several of my own properties. And let's just say the, the properties that we manage in Turks and Caicos, uh, there's not many in our little, you know, miniature little complex there, but, uh, but each one manages, them, manages themselves separately. And it does create a bit of a headache because you have similar offerings for similar units uh, but at different prices with different slightly benefits and everyone's kind of doing different things. So if you had a complex like this with 120 something units with everybody trying to figure it out themselves, I think it would be a disaster. <laughs> so, well, yeah. well, not only that, I think to add to that too, is what we're really trying to do is we're trying to eliminate cannibalism. We're trying to eliminate other property management companies undercutting one another so that they can essentially get their one unit rented. When, yeah. you're, when you're doing it in a resort style, you know, we're saying, hey, guys, this is the nightly rental for today across the board. Do you want a four bedroom? This is the price, you know, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a consistency so that everybody gets a fair chance to make the most amount of money possible. This yes. is exactly the reason why even the interiors, the furnishings, the towels, everything is consistent within the board. And, we're, you know, all of these decisions were made, <clears throat> um, you know, in part with Deep and I and developer is taking taking an investor approach rather than what a lot of developers have done in the past, which is just build them and they're like, we don't care, we'll just sell them and just kind of go from there. What we've been trying to do is, is try and, and be um, mindful and have this whole idea from A to Z comprehensive so that the investor at the end of the day is really the one winning here. Okay, perfect. Before we get to some of these individual questions, I just want to touch really quickly while I have everyone's attention on the buying process. So very simply, um, it's 5,000 to reserve a unit. Now, I, most people, when they're purchasing a condo, let's say they, they might be used to uh, a cooling off period. So in, in Toronto, there's a 10 day cooling off period where like you can put your deposit down and then get it back if you're not interested. And, and I think a lot of people are gonna wanna use, are, are gonna uh, want financing for this. I, I don't imagine a lot of people are gonna wanna pay cash. So uh, is there some kind of uh, assurance for them or a conditional period where they can go and get, check their financing before they commit? Yes, we can. We could do two steps. If they're interested in something uh, and they're not sure if they're going to be qualified or they can move forward, we can get them in touch with TD Bank directly before they put a reservation. So but we can guarantee uh, that particular lot or the pricing. Uh, if by the time they get approved by TD and the prices increase, prices have changed. So that's one. And, 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 and pretty simple. Uh, you know, I think we have a cooling period of, you know, after signing the contract, that's what is three days. Okay. So the cooling off period of three days, which is not much time, not nearly enough to get pre-qualified. So I think what Deep is trying to say is, is if you're interested and you want to see if you qualify first, your first step is to quickly, or as quick as humanly possible, get qualified with TD and then put your deposit down. Is that correct? Yes. And, and we're not here to keep anybody's deposit, guys. You know, we want to build a project out. The goal is to be finished with this project in uh, 18 to 24 months. And if somebody does put a deposit down, they let their, their fear of losing on the pricing. Uh, if they don't get approved, we get a denial letter from TD that this is not going to happen. We release the money. We're not here to keep the people's five thousand dollar deposit, uh, and it's it's sitting with the attorneys anyway. It's not going to us or the developer. Got it. Yeah, Paul. Well, if you don't mind, I'm just looking at the chat on the side. I'm going to hammer down all the questions, and um, we'll go from there. So let me answer Brett's question directly. Go ahead. Why why not include the furniture in the mortgage price? Well, a mortgage is based on real property, and lenders are not going to be able to furnish. Uh, sorry, include the, the, the furniture um, as part of the mortgage from that perspective. We've asked because we thought it would be easier and every single lender said that won't be possible. However, city furniture <clears throat> will have a program where you can finance the furniture at 0% or, or extremely low interest rate. I'm not exactly sure um, for one year with a 25% down payment. So that option exists for uh, our buyers as well, too. Um, as far as Tanvir's question, um, which is the, what is the yearly rate of return? Uh, Paula, um, Paul, 
Enza and Megan will be addressing that with you guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We've discussed the HOA fees, which is it's going to range between 213 and 259 or 260, like Deep said, depending on the specific unit. It's based on square footage. Um, and you know, Enza and Megan also have those numbers as well, too. The prices are in US. Um, Deep answered the question of how long the turnkey contracts will be. They're the only property management company that is available uh, on site. We what is the average capital appreciation of properties in Florida? The, 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 the crazy reality is between last year and this year, the average uh, year to date, um, year to year increase has been 16.6%. That is obviously not uh, you know, common. I would probably say, Deep, what would you jump in and say? Uh, I'm, gl I'm glad you called me in. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, we are at a different stage at this yeah. present time. But I think all of the country is, especially in the US, uh, everybody's relocating. Uh, like we said, 1,100 people are moving to Florida daily. Mm -hmm. So just imagine what's going to happen. Uh, average, it's anywhere from four to seven percent standard. Yeah. And if you and take this, your, last year out of the picture and this year out of the picture, it's pretty much that. Right. I, I um, always but, tell people if it's quality property on quality land and a quality location at a bare minimum over a long period of time, you expect three to five percent. Yeah. Right. Pretty close. Yep. Very accurate. Okay. Um, two years okay after two years can you drop out of the rental program you don't need to join the rental program at all you can use the property whenever you want you have <clears throat> the following options you can use the property for yourself you don't have to buy the furniture package if you choose to rent the property you will need to furnish the property to put it into the program that's the only difference right um, the, we, we've already discussed that you can't roll in the furniture package into the mortgage that, that came again. Um, Brett said that's an expensive post-purchase cost. The furniture package that we have are actually amongst the cheapest in the developments out there. A lot of the other homes, they have packages of over 60 to hundred thousand uh, dollars, for some of our competition. And, um, you know, you can research that as well too. And, um, the Purchase price includes okay, same question again. Purchase also, Dawa, can I just jump in and say something quickly with respect to the furniture package? Culturally, this is something very different for people because people are used to here buying a property and you know they rent it out and they just rent it out to people and they bring their own furniture. What we're talking about here is creating an exclusive sort of four seasons look and feel, which is very common in the short-term luxury rental space. So Megan and I went down to Florida yesterday, uh, yesterday, I wish. Last year, we vetted this against so many other resort styles. They're all done the same way down there. This is just the way it's done there. So just to sort of help people sort of understand that. It's right. very different there. And yeah. as Dad would mention, there is a financing option from the city furniture um, company who's uh, outletting these furniture. So you 25% down at some either 0% or very low interest rate. Which I and think one, one other thing too, even if you, you know, you decide to um, do be a part of this, this, you know, lease option that uh, the, the developer may have uh, after the closing, you can still use the property for two weeks out of the year. So you still have access to enjoy that property. It's not going to be leased out for a hundred percent of the year. And, you know, and that's a really great option as well, too, if that's what you want to do. But once again, you can opt to either live in it yourself as a second home or even a, you know, a, a personal home for, for your family. And then at the same time, you can rent them out. If you decide that you want to rent it out, you will have to do the furniture pack. Uh, what are the comparables for a home or townhouse in the area? Okay, wonderful. Um, the comparables for another project that uh, is very similar. Um, Deep, what, what's the current prices over at? Um... Spectrum? Yeah. I think the three bedroom starts at uh, high uh, uh, 300, like oh, pretty close to $400,000. Uh, and on top of that, I think the HOA is like 500 bucks a month. Right. And they're part of the CDC, uh, CDC too, right? Oh, like CDD. CDD. So what yeah. a CDD yeah. guys is, is a community development charge. So basically what a lot of the developers do is they take a bond from the city that 
the city gives them money because they obviously want to develop this land. The developers will go out, develop the land. So the city's benefit is obviously they generate greater um, amount of uh, property tax revenue. And as well, the developer gets the opportunity to build out a new community here. In our case, that charge does not exist because ironically, the city, the street that divides our project with anything across the street is also what separates us from being in a county called Polk County versus Osceola County, which the taxes are a lot higher. And even the impact fees are double than, uh, than what we uh, have on, on our side as well too. Uh, how long will it take for TD uh, to provide approval? Honestly, they're so backed up right now with all of the approvals from people that want to buy properties here that we're seeing it to be about 48 to 72 hours. I mean, we're going to try and push for as quickly as possible, but that's basically what we're looking at. I thought um, you were going to say two to three weeks. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, two to three days is nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, property management's 23%. Um, and yeah, okay. So that answers that. Okay, tax implications for Canadians. I'm not a tax accountant, but I will tell you this. The first thing that I will say is on average, um, if you look at a purchase price and you multiply it by approximately 1.6%, you can generally estimate what the taxes are going to be, property taxes. We don't know what the property taxes are specifically because of one reason. As it stands right now, it's raw land. So based on the raw land value, you're going to be paying nothing, basically. But realistically speaking, if you multiply 1.6% by the purchase price, it will give you a good indicator for what the tax bill should be. And taxes in Florida are paid in arrears. In other words, we end up paying 2021 taxes due in end of the year. And you have all the way until April of 2022 to pay off that tax year versus in Canada where it's done in, in opposite. Um, tax implications for Canadians. Okay, no problem. Canadians do not pay, and try and hear me out co co correctly here, more taxes than Americans do, per se. I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. I'm going to use Deep as an example of a person who is living in his property as a primary resident. If you live in your property as a primary resident, there's such a thing called homestead exemption. Because it's your homestead, they give you a bit of a break for a person living in their primary residence. Because you are a Canadian and your primary residence is in Canada, you will not be able to take advantage of that. Now, it is not based on your citizenship, but purely based on the fact of whether or not you're using this property as a primary residence or not. So even if you're a Canadian, or let's say, for example, Paul lives in New York and Enza lives in, I don't know, California. The Canadian person, Paul, uh, ends up, they all pay the same tax rate for their property taxes as everyone else would. The only person that gets a better break is the person that's using that property as a primary risk. That's number one. Number two, as a Canadian or any other investor, you're paying taxes on the rental proceeds that you're getting from the rental of your property. However, the good news is if you're looking to get a mortgage plus add in a lot of the expenses, what we want to try and do is minimize your, your profit exposure to taxes. And of course, you know, if you're coming to, to visit when the property opens up in the, uh, when the borders open up in the future, I'm sure you can write off a lot of these additional expenses as well and consult with your accountant and they'll give you a better idea on what can be written off. But your, um, your tax exposure here is going to obviously be minimal once you factor in the, the mortgage uh, that's going to, you know, obviously um, help to, to be paid off by the proceeds that you're getting from renting your property out. Now, when you come to sell the property, there's something called FRIFTA, which is basically a foreign withholding tax. Currently, it's 15%. Um, and that's only to ensure that the, tag, the, the, the seller is not running away without paying the taxes. We can get into a lot more detail on that. But at this point in time, we're more focused on purchasing the property rather than selling it. But there's definitely a lot of ways that we can assist with, uh, you know, crypto certifications and so on and so forth that we can get to. But once again, I know you guys are more interested in buying the place than selling the place. Um, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we can get into a little bit more details there. 
uh, is TD considering the income for these properties to qualify? Um, so no. a, a lot of the times, the sorry what? No. No what? TD doesn't doesn't uh, consider income from this to correct. approve their rent. So yeah, yeah, correct. I just want to be clear. There was a couple of same people. A couple of people asked the same question. Yeah. It's not. They're gonna based on your income, your debt to the ratio. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a, a question. Uh, I realize that that TD financing sounds uh, like the most ideal, uh, especially with that interest rate. Uh, yeah. Now I, I've been talking to some real estate people down here on the Gulf side, just learning and kind of making my way around. And there are some decent, uh, what I would call semi-private lending options. And those run in like the, from what I can see here in like the four to four and a half, 4.69%. Do you guys have some hookups there in case TD is being a pain and someone still wants yep, to see? Absolutely. The only difference is it, many of the other lenders will be looking at 25 or 30% down. Yeah, that's and, okay, 25. Yeah, it just depends on the lender, right? Yeah. A lot of the other nationalities, I mean, some of the Brazilian programs are 30%. For some nationalities, um, you know, like China and stuff like that, it could be even more than that, yeah. you know, 35%, but the doc requirements are also a little bit more limited and the interest rates are higher. Now we're looking at five and 6% or four and a half percent, depending on the program, depending on the country. So yeah. yes, there are alternatives, but ideally speaking, you know, if we can try and stick with a TD program or, you know, something uh, similar, the down payment structures are lower and the interest rates are better for Canadian. Yeah, I, I, I'm just thinking that, you know, they're going to be, I guarantee there's going to be some people who want to buy and then they might be self-employed like me and yeah. then the debt ratios don't work, obviously. Correct. And then for Correct. someone like me, like TD is going to laugh at me. I already know this. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, I, I always want to have a backup option, even though I'm paying a percent or whatever higher. If I like the property and it's of good use to me personally, and I'm going to make money from it, I, I still want to have the option to, to get financing, right? So Correct. that's why I was asking. Yeah, no problem. We can definitely explore that on a case-by-case -case basis for sure. Okay. So what, we're going to organize a little group call to review financials with everyone uh, on Monday and Tuesday um, with uh, Megan Enzen and I. If someone wants to proceed and, and put their deposit, what would be this, the, the next step after that? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if they can circle back with, with you guys, um, basically all we would need to do is, you know, we can immediately send you guys an updated list of uh, the inventory that's available. And um, um, and then they can select the lot that they want. Mm -hmm. Once they select the lot that they want, you know, um, Enza and Megan, I keep wanting to say Menza all the time. <laughs> because we talk all the time on the phone. So Menza will uh, circle back with you guys. And uh, like Benifer, Ben yeah, Affleck ben, and Jennifer. Yeah, Menza. Benifer. Um, so Menza. Menza, Menza will get back to you guys and uh, um, just, uh, just select the unit. And then once you guys select the unit, the, you know, they'll let us know. You'll fill out a reservation form. And essentially uh, on Monday or Tuesday, the reservation form will have the wire instructions to the attorney. By the way, all funds are being held in escrow with the attorney. The developer will not touch $1 from start to finish, as well as uh, until closing, at which time all of the, the funds will be turned over to um, the developer. But in the meantime, all funds are held in escrow, so your funds are secured. You don't have to worry about that at all. Paul, there's one question somebody put in the timeline on the four and the five bedrooms. The first two buildings that we have, that's total of 11 units, will be completed in uh, August 2021. But that building has already been completely, the four and the five are completely sold. So the next phase of the buildings that's going to be constructed, or, or if they have any interest, uh, will be ready in uh, January 2022. So the, the, the next phase, that was Tanvir's question. Uh, I know Tanvir yep. as well. He was he was asking that. So the next phase, the next block would be completed December, January, twenty two. Yes, sir. Okay, good. We do have some uh, three bedrooms in the first phase. So if somebody's interested in the three bedroom, yeah. uh, we have a few units in there. <clears throat> yeah. For everybody, uh, construction doesn't take as long as Toronto. There's no basements, and they get to work all year round. We can't so. build a basement because we're gonna hit water underneath us. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> the water table is so low. <laughs> yeah, we don't want basements. Okay, I, I think that covers the, the, the mass majority of questions from everybody. I think the remaining has to do all with financials. And like I said, I'm going to email everybody uh, uh, today, should be later today or this evening, to organize a, a Zoom call for like Monday evening and Tuesday evening, and we'll get all these financials uh, reviewed, okay? And if you guys, uh, Deep and I would, please send me whatever you think we're going to need uh, to finish off that process. And anyone who wants to proceed, we'll, we'll, we'll connect you guys. Yeah, I think Enzo and Megan already know what to do. They send us the information. We get it going on our end. We email them directly, electronically signed. They can review the document. So it's I wasn't kind of really going to I wasn't really gonna do it anyway. I was just trying to be nice. But I know. <laughs> so I we already, we already, they already told us about you. So. <laughs> hey, Paul, we're really looking forward to it. Here. I think it will be very uh, useful for all of your amazing clients to you know, see the project. I think we should do, you know, a number of really cool videos when you're here so that yeah. you can obviously come and see and touch. Thousand, thousand percent, yeah. I will be there. Yeah, definitely and, uh, looking forward to seeing you when you come. And I think the girls are going to have a blast at all the theme parks as well, too. And I'll give you a shopping list of all the cool stuff to do when you're, yeah. when you're here as well. I just, I just need a place to stay first. <laughs> no problem. We'll work. Hey, let's start working on that from oh. now. For yeah. Dawood, let me address one more thing. I know there are a few people on the call. I know everybody's going to go and do a research online and see what's out there. So please, guys, uh, please get with Enzai and uh, Megan and Paul because the incentives we are talking about, it's going to be changing every day. If this is only for you guys. There are other uh, brokers out there marketing our product uh, like everybody else does the different projects we are the actual listing agents so there are other sites that you might go register and they might uh, promise you a moon and a star uh, and you won't get those so you you need to go straight to the horses so yeah. they can they can direct you in the right direction and, and i think just to be clear if you guys have a pen and a pencil i'm going to put this in the chat just so that you can see it directly the correct and the only website which is the developer website is the Azure Resort. I just put it. Um, I just put it. Uh, okay, hold on. I don't know why it's not going in the chat. Oh, this. Okay, this is direct message too. Right. Okay. So, give me a second. Let me. Actually, um, can can you? Uh, one second. Oh, to everybody. I apologize. I made a mistake here. So. The correct website is the azureresort.com, um, not any other variation of that um, URL. And of course, as, here as at Dalwood, the sorry, as Dalwood and Deep are mentioning, the best incentives that we have going are the ones that they're going to offer our team directly correct. because of the relationship that we have with the Dalwood. Um, and I just want to sort of mention to everybody the whole point of this beautiful development is a place where you can go and enjoy it and have all of your expenses offset by somebody else hassle-free one stop there's nothing for you guys to do or figure out because the hardest part for buying a u.s property is trying to figure out where you don't lose your shirt and where you don't get involved in something that isn't legitimate or authentic so in the interest of time paul because i know you have the three beautiful girls there and i know that dalwood has a showing that he needs to get to i just want to thank everybody for coming paul do you have any sort of you know next steps no, no that's it let's get uh, everybody uh, uh let everyone go for mother's day i know some people have kind of dropped off it's okay but we had all uh, i i sent out the invitation to almost 60 people today guys so there was some real interest there was almost 35 people on the call yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and a lot of people are waiting for for this to be recording. So let, let let's let's say let's say our goodbyes, and we will send an email today for sure with an invitation for Monday or Tuesday to review financials and proceed if you want to proceed. Good. good. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Paul. Thank Thanks, you. Paul. Thank Have you a good day. Thank Have you. Fun. Thank you, guys. Bye, Thank you so much. Happy Thanks. Sunday. Bye bye.